Welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live coding hangout. By joining a CodeBuddies hangout, you can ask questions, work through tutorials, share ideas, or pair program on open source projects. In today's code session, we're not really going to be coding as much, but we're going to be sort of looking at data and data visualization and data analysis using some open source tools. Um, we've been working in previous sessions on um, an open source mapping project. I'm going to mothball that project for now. Um, it's sort of uh, lost its direction, uh, I believe. Um, and I think where the project is currently is, is actually viable as a minimum uh, viable project for mapping data in general, just um, specifically in this case for COVID. 19 cases, self-reported cases. Um, in the previous session, we started experimenting with a little bit of um, data visualization of existing data sets. And we're going to continue that today just to get a better idea of what data is available, open data, what it looks like, and what some tools are um, that you and I can use to just get a, a sense of any kind of um, generally time series data. So specifically, we're going to be looking at a couple of, potentially a couple of data sets. This um, EU Open Data Portal contains daily COVID-19 cases worldwide. I'll link this in the chat. I don't know if so anybody joining the chat can download this data and try it at home. And I have already opened this uh, one example. Let me just go through these browser tools first. Um, when working through this COVID uh, mapping project that I've been working on for a couple of sessions now, um, on a couple of occasions I've been asked, you know, why are you building another mapping tool, there's, uh, are there any other things you could be building on or working on, for example, relating to COVID or otherwise. And um, I still think there's a legitimate need for like a self-reporting tool. And actually the original idea for the project was from the Finnish government. They were asking that anybody could create an open source or just a tool to allow people to report when they're feeling COVID-19 symptoms. That would give a, um, the, a little bit more insight into uh, the emergence or the spread of COVID as it uh, becomes more epidemic in sm smaller contexts. So a lot of the data right now on a global context is aggregated at the country level, and we'll see that in a little while. Uh, so we do have a minimum viable tool for that, and I don't want to kind of thrash around too much in that tool and break it because it's working. And if I mothball it now, we might be able to swing back around to it and use it um, and improve on it. So today I've been taking a little bit of time to see what else is out there. I have done a few cursory searches of COVID-19 maps, et cetera. Um, with our tool that we were creating, the, the data were very granular. You could pick exactly your location in a, a city down to the block level of detail, like 100 meters uh, accurate. And so there are a couple of data visualizations I was hoping to employ, uh, clustering and heat maps specifically uh, that work with that level of data. Um, when I realized we're not going to be deploying this tool for general use, um, it just became um, apparent that I would need to look at how to visualize existing data. And these country level aggregations don't work so well with clustering or heat mapping, unfortunately. Um, so the typical maps that we find for cor coronavirus uh, being choropleth, like the country code, countries colored by intensity or these little sizing of the uh, symbols. Um, are a lot easier to produce those, I suppose. It's uh, still not ideal, not, but uh, I don't know right now another way of visualizing it. This project, Our World in Data, has an open source platform and publishes data visualizations uh, using open data. And they have some excellent visualizations. So we're going to kind of be emulating those. 
Um, I'll start a preview. So I should be having some charts here. Let me go back. What's going on here with this site? Why don't I have these previews? <laughs> Summary. It looks like we're having a little bit of trouble with the live stream. Sorry for the, any delays uh, or lag that you're experiencing. And one thing that was becoming apparent is that in order to compare country to country, um, a lot of times we're seeing counts like the total cases, total confirmed cases, total deaths. Um, and then we're comparing countries based on their totals. And that, I think, is a little bit misleading. And what we really need to do is sort of normalize across countries. Uh, for example, per capita, uh, the number of cases reported, or um, this site actually uses cases per million. So I think that's a good good <laughs> lens. I just am having a hard time finding the, uh, the maps. Let me see why. Our world in data. Data on COVID-19 testing. What do we know about the risk of dying from COVID-19? How many tests for COVID-19, COVID-19 deaths and cases? How do the sources compare? I think this was probably it. Okay, so this project is our world in data org is open source on GitHub. I'll post the link in the Twitch chat, and if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll put links to these projects in the show notes so you can access these, um, try them out at home. With some tea, probably. So, this is MIT licensed. The caveat here is it's not currently designed for immediate reuse as a full library. Or welcome to adapt it to uh, any of the code to s suit our needs or send pull requests. So I'm sort of looking for an off-the-shelf tool I can just plug some data into and start exploring along the lines of Tableau. And the open source uh, ecosystem, that's sorely lacking. There are some really good tools for data visualization. Apache Superset comes to mind. Uh, this Gapminder tool we'll be taking a look at today. Uh, if I, called Visibe. If I could just find some of these. Uh, here's an example. The, the COVID situation dashboard is maybe how I got to it. If I visualize it. Mm, but this is from Europa. Actually, yeah, this is good just to do a, a quick uh, overview of how these projects are um, uh, handling the data. Um, and just to set the background, the trend in coronavirus mapping and data visualization, probably in general, but more than we want to look at it geographically, we want to put it on the map, uh, is to use these what are called choropleth maps um, that have colors, uh, country or municipal or administrative boundaries and then the color coding based on intensity. And then they have these ones that have symbols that they scale, so um, proportionalist symbology. And you can get uh, into some really messy uh, situations with these Proportional symbology, uh, where it's just very hard to understand what's going on. It looks like you know we're in a like a asteroid shower of coronavirus cases or something, and it's just uh, difficult. You can still see you know some of the spread. Um, I think these are just scaled way too big. Uh, and then similarly, you know, with you, when you do a um, this choropleth type, you don't really know the within a country where the cases are located. And I think that's going to be um, very difficult right now with the level of data I've found out there anyway. All right, so when we look at this European Center for Disease Prevention and Control, they are aggregating by country and continent. They're using proportional symbology. They're dual encoding the data size and color. And I've just found that they're Website's kind of janky. The maps tile layers don't quite want to load in as much. But what we get here is essentially a symbol per country. And it's probably on the center point of the country or something along those lines. 
and scaling. They're showing the absolute number of cases. So almost 300,000 in the United States, almost 2,000 in Mexico. Uh, it gives a hard, it's still a little bit hard to compare country to country. Um, also, this is just uh, legends are not working to show you how they're breaking the data. But essentially, I think they're doing an arbitrary, an arbitrary kind of breakpoints, like one to five thousand, um, five thousand to fifteen thousand, something like that. That might not be proportional to like the statistical nature of the data, the percentiles or some other um, natural contours that could be found in the data distribution. But in any case. I think this is a lot better if it were working properly, a lot better that you can still see the countries. There's a few overlapping symbols, but um, it's a lot easier to understand this uh, map than something like, well, that's crazy. Uh, but this one is a ctvnews.ca is just a mess. And I'm not really trying to say I can do better. It's, in fact, really difficult. So honestly, I just need to acknowledge that. This is uh, really interesting and challenging uh, in endeavor, but it's really important that we are able to communicate clearly with data and not induce panic or something when you see the whole of Europe and China essentially covered with red. Uh, it's psychologically, you know, induce fear. It's telling people, um, you know, this is certainly, you know, as a pandemic, it's certainly unprecedented in, in our generation and several generations, I don't know, uh, maybe in general, but uh, so I don't mean to d downplay that, but also we need to clearly understand the data a little bit more. Here's an interesting map I demonstrated in a uh, previous uh, live stream, it's a heat map showing the change in pollution and air pollution before and after. And here, these kind of heat maps are really nice and I was hoping to produce one, but we don't have the data to support the, that type of map for coronavirus reporting. Because uh, then you can see the distribution. You can see, well, Hong Kong and uh, Wuhan. Uh, is, well, Hong Kong has got a lot of cases. Chongqing, a few, fewer cases. And then you can compare across time to see how things are clearing up, and this is again air pollution and not coronavirus cases, but it's um, correlated with the social distancing having a positive impact on the environment, essentially. Okay, so I've downloaded this tool called Gapminder Offline, and I'll put this in the chat. Hey, what's up, Rich? Uh, you're welcome back. Uh, Rich says, did you manage to work out the data in the end? I did, and actually today, um, I'm going to look at the data that you recommended. I got the geocoding to work and everything, I, it, just like you were sort of that uh, geopie. So I really appreciate your feedback and guidance there. And uh, you know, it was kind of like a five-hour session, so I was just like burnt out towards the end. I do that to myself sometimes, but I kind of want to get to a stopping point. You know, something that I don't just leave off with everything hanging. Um, but the main takeaways from that session were: I, th I don't know how long you've been here in this initial introduction, but. Uh, the data are not granular enough to do like something like a heat map or clustering. We're just at, you know looking at country level data, like you pointed out, like you uh, showed. I believe you shared um, this data from Europa. Is that correct? I saved the link. Oh, I think this is the one. Um, yeah, and the other main takeaway is that project that I, that I've been working on. I'm just going to mothball it because I think it's a, actually an interesting and useful project, um, but just not for this type of data. So I'm going in a different direction. So I'm kind of forking, I'm in a little fork in the road, and we're going to go down the explore, we're going to continue down the exploratory path. Uh, I, don't, I usually do live coding on this uh, channel, so why not do some um, exploratory data analysis? It's pretty similar. Uh, yeah, so this is the data. Cyber Guy Rich, that Cyber Guy Rich actually recommended this yesterday during the live stream. And um, today I was just doing some research, stepping back, getting a little bit more clarity on um, sources of data, how they're representing the data and things like that. And so this Our World in Data, I really like um, their charts, they're interactive, you can change the time period and 
you know, share. They should have the data source. These charts are open source, so uh, that's useful. There, and, you know, I can just download the data like that. That's really nice. And they have nice maps, Corpleth map here, and it's sort of you can animate it over time. So this is the best presentation I've found of of the uh, coronavirus. The emergence of coronavirus pan pandemic around the world. Um, so I kind of wanted to emulate that. So coming back around, uh, you might have heard of Hans Rosling. He's um, the guy. Uh, he was uh, passed away recently. He's from Sweden. He uh, was world-renowned statistician. Um, basically, he was like really articulate and able to communicate some correlations between kind of, well, more or less well-being and GDP, like global development, essentially. He's a physician, actually, but uh, I thought he was a statistician. Well, he is a public speaker. So um, he created this Gapminder Foundation. If you have a chance, though, this is really, he's really inspiring. Passed away in 2017. I think they published a book of his posthumously, um, and he has a really uplifting message that you know we're not on a crash course, landing course. Actually, humanity is doing very good. Um, you know, we have a lot of challenges, and a lot certainly um, a lot of problems, but overall, I think his message is that we're on a, an upward trajectory for for improving the well-being of people around the world. Uh, certainly, we have great challenges with um, inequality and wealth distribution and, you know, degradation of environmental resources. What's the name of his book? Anyway, so he created this Gapminder Foundation, and what they do with the Gapminder is uh, create interactive tools that bring his, the, his data and message to life in a way that you can run in your web browser. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Whereas he was just uh, initially on a stage at, like, the TED conference showing the numbers. Um, they've actually made this, and he had custom designed this software with some um, graduate students or something uh, for his presentations, and now they've rewritten the software in JavaScript. And you can see, so here's life expectancy and sort of the country income, and you can kind of see a relationship, an upward trend over uh, the last uh, century, and, well, century and a half. So we've got gapminder.org. And what I want to do is take this data. You can see the structure is um, pretty flexible. You have data that's time series, and it's divided by country and some um, other in indicators, like economic indicators, well-being, income, life expectancy, energy consumption, environment, health, a lot of cool stuff here. Um, they just don't have uh, our coronavirus. Uh, data, but the, this tool runs offline. But you can see more or less um, in a century and a half, most of the world's life expectancy has risen like significantly, and a lot of the income. It's uh, there's a lot of inequality. It's spread across here. That, that, that's one of the main problems. But in cer certain regions, certainly are. Um, kind of being more neglected or more left out than, than other regions, of course. That's the inequality again. Um, but I think Hans Rosling's message was that even the economic inequality were trending upwards into this, uh, this quadrant, so to speak. So it's really interesting. So you can download this tool. I think it was Gapminder, and teachers can use it and use the tool offline. It's open source. How did I download this? And they have various degree charts. This is the bubbles, but you can also look at it on a map, which is kind of what I want to do today. They're using this, again, proportional symbology and, and kind of getting crazy with some of these symbols because of the. Uh, Probably the population here, yeah, the population size is huge. But you can see here 
with the population changes over time. So how did I get this? The tool here I've got it running is called Gapminer Tools Offline. link to the tool so you can download it admittedly the tools are I don't know sometimes a little bit rough around the edges it's not something like a tableau or something where it's really polished and has a lot of financing and stuff um, I think it's just par for a course. Uh, most of these uh, open source data visualization tools, you know, either you're writing Python or R code to, to manually craft together some visualizations, or there's a few reporting and dashboarding tools, but they have like a pretty high either uh, learning curve or getting them up and running curve. It's not like a simple thing you can just download and run and pop some data in and start using. Uh, there are some tools like OpenRefine that are allowing you to do some of the transformation and cleaning of data, but not visual exploration. I, I think this is one of the closer ones that you can just download it and um, run it and then upload a CSV. So we're going to try that real quick with this um, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19 coronavirus cases, COVID cases world not wide. What have you been up to today, Rich? Have you been studying for your tests? Oh, it's got a couple of trends, a couple of localizations, new chart, R data. So I've never used this. And this is actually interesting that you can export it for a web. So we could kind of create a COVID map and just publish it as like a static GitHub pages website. That might be the most useful thing that comes out of these <laughs> past couple of weeks of uh, live coding series, uh, you know, sporadic live coding. So add data from as a CSV file. All right, so how's our data arranged? Time goes down because it's down the column. Uh, and you have to have it in a specific order. Column one has to be the country, column two has to be the time, and then three and so on needs to be the indicators. Rich says, went for a super long walk, longer than I planned to do, working on my test a bit later. Other than that, stuck in the house. Yeah, actually I haven't been out of the house all day, so. <laughs> It's nice that you went out. The weather is beautiful here today. How's the weather there in the UK? So let me just check our data real quick. Uh, I have, I think it's open up here. Is this the correct one? COVID, COVID, confirmed cases uh, per million. Actually, this is an interesting data set that I got from, um, From this our world of numbers. I just can't get back to that page. I don't know where the heck it went. There's a whole list of these charts for COVID, and I thought this was the dang page. Oh, on the, this page. It's buried there a little bit. Link. Hidden. Ah, uh, this is actually not the one. There's another page with even more listing including cases per million, but yeah, this, this, uh, our world in data is excellent. I've come across it in the past, but didn't really put much kind of emphasis on, but yeah, this, look at these, uh, charts. So this is like these gap minder like charts. And the cool thing is you can see it, the trend, the slope of, uh, the cases and things like that. And you can select you know, it's totally interactive. You can select it to add areas. Then it could start to get a little bit cluttering. Here we go. This is uh, actually a really important one. Cases relative to the size of the population, uh, because we're not really comparing apples to apples when we uh, look at Italy and the United States, for example, but um, this is sort of normalized 242 deaths per million in Italy. And the United States is 21. 0.62 deaths per million. I don't know how, you know, the populations are, I think, on a one or two or, orders of magnitude different, 300 something, 300 something million in the United States. So, in other words, um, 
the chart can make it look a lot worse in certain areas that have really high population and you might it might overshadow places that are having really horrible um, you know just like a very significant rate of infection and yeah and mortality so this is really good Corpleth and all I think this is excellent because they've normalized the data Rich says really nice annoyingly nice given no one can take full advantage of it the weather yeah true true Well, it depends, but yeah, I guess you'd want to go like swimming or to the beach or walking or something like that. Or, well, what would be taking full advantage of the weather, I suppose? Just hanging outside at the park with friends and whatnot? Yes, so this is essentially where I got the cases per million data. It's underlying data for this chart. COVID, COVID uh, confirmed deaths since the 5th. Well, it's not exactly this chart, but so then back to the gap minder. If we want to import this, we then need to the first uh, row, column needs to be country. Second column needs to be the date. Delete columns. Man, I can't read. Beach would be a good way. Going to the pub and sitting out in the garden would be another. That's true. Well, you can. You can sit out in the garden. Do you have a nice garden? I live in a shared apartment building, so I don't have a garden. I just learned the other day we have a sauna here. I learned it because there's that because there's a COVID notice that the sauna is closed. I didn't know this whole time. Um, this is something I'm just gonna delete also. I don't think it's super interesting. I hope this date format works. It should be able to parse that, but we had troubles with that yesterday. Um, we're using UK and Finland style dates. Oops. So we got the data and we're gonna pick our CSV file. I believe I put that right here. Oh, I've been downloading that. Oh, these are recent files. I'm say I've been done mixing up my files. Expected country, but found country in the first column. Expected time, but found date in the second column. Importing is still possible, but it might. So you have to literally name them country with lowercase and time with lowercase. Let's try that again. Optional time values look like this, so maybe not. Time has an extra column with nice looking names. Lord. I prepare and export data from an MS Excel file from Google Docs. Let's see if it worked. <laughs> Rich says, I do have a garden, which is pretty nice. It allows me to work outside instead of being stuck inside. Oh, cool. You can just take your computer out there and do you have like a little garden table and drink some tea or whatever? What do you drink, PG tips or what's your favorite? Okay, wow, is this the same data? No, this is a different one. So we're gonna add a chart now. Um, what do you think, bubbles? We'll start with, or lines? Man, I just couldn't go into order. This is really cool, mountains. We have bubbles, but then how do I choose my data? Life expectancy. Nutri from our data. Oh. Strange. Oh, add data to the active chart or add, oh. Actually, this is really cool. I just uh, realized that you we can combine this um, novel coronavirus data with all of the other indicators that are in the um, gap miner data. So we can look at this and there's a really interesting one that occurred that uh, I saw earlier on the Our World in Data where they compared um, number of confirmed cases with GDP. And there's like almost, you know, there's a linear correlation. The, the higher the GDP, the, num the higher the number of confirmed cases. And I'm thinking it probably has something to do with that, that they can afford test kits, something like that. 
see if we can find that one real quick, just as an aside. But yeah, this is where it gets, this is some really interesting stuff. Days. Um, they had a bubble chart. Total confirmed cases, total COVID tests. Uh, so there's a sort of a linear relationship between the number of tests and number of cases, but there's a lot of jitter there. Per capita test by country. One of these is GDP. Here, I'll just make sure you have this link if you want to check out some of these. I think I have to scroll in order to load these other ones in. Oh, here it is, by GDP. So the total confirmed deaths from COVID-19 per million people versus GDP per capita. Okay, maybe I was exaggerating this, but total confirmed cases per million people versus GDP per capita. This one is kind of a strong linear relationship. Let's just take a look at that full screen. Or a little bit bigger. You could draw a linear regression through that. And if you took out, hmm. There's a lot of scatter here in the African countries, well, in the Asian countries too. But here in Europe, it's a lot tighter. The correlation, hmm. South America is a... But isn't that interesting, I think? The more money people make, Per capita, the more confirmed cases there is in the country is a generalization. Okay. Oh. Yeah, sorry, I was just making sure my screen is working. If, um, by the way, my video, if it's flickering at all, uh, do let me know because I'm changing the way I record today. I'm recording the entire monitor. It makes it easier when I'm jumping between apps. With the live coding, I just kind of have two, I have my thing split into two. I have code and uh, um, the preview, and that seems to work pretty good, but sometimes I need to just load spreadsheet data or something like that, and then I have to create a whole nother scene in OBS, I don't know. So I don't have it worked out and I don't have a quick way to switch those. And I don't wanna forget, sometimes I'll be like looking at a spreadsheet and the live stream will be you know, showing some other uh, window. And... All right, so. Let me try this one more time. If I add our data to the active chart as a CSV file, then maybe we can compare confirmed cases here. For example, confirmed cases with GDP. Huh. I don't know. COVID-19 confirmed cases per million. Yeah, it just doesn't seem to want it. Expert format is some from like 2020, but found December 30th, 2019. Possible reasons this could happen data. So yeah, we're gonna have a date format and you should find. So, in LibreOffice, can I do this or do I need to pull it into Python? Let me just see. Let's look this one up real quick. I probably can figure it out. Oh, sorry, Rich, let's see. 
the hey what's up cloaked welcome we are looking at some COVID-19 data and open source visualization tools just to get a better sense of what's going on and maybe publish um, a little interactive uh, static interactive uh, exploration we're using this gapminders tool which is free and open source uh, if you go to gapminder.org tools you can download it and the data cyber guy rich or just rich um, recommended using this data so we might take a look at that and this our world in data has probably the most excellent <laughs> um, superlatives there uh, visualizations and data available they've done various aggregations and things like calculating cases per capita and letting you compare against GDP and stuff like that so uh, these are our main sources of inspiration and data and tools. And the static, this uh, Gapminder lets you export a static thing for web, so it might be the case that we could just export this and then upload it to GitHub pages or something. All right, so. Yeah, I need to format those dates so that the Gapminder recognizes them. And right now they're just kind of being treated as strings, so. Mm. And how do I change the date format? Format. Date, we'll just use ISO style dates, I think would be the bestest. The bestest. Did it work? It didn't work, did it? Hmm. I might just have to pull this one into uh, pandas or something. I don't see why that wouldn't work, though. Highlight the range and click format cells, numbers, tab, then click. This is a little bit old, isn't it? From 2014. Then choose date under the category list in the format code box. Put here your moment and hit. Okay, and that should do it. If it doesn't, you should check. Think about an upgrade. In fact, you should upgrade anyway. All right, thanks for that. So, format cells. I did find that. Ah, but I must not have clicked the OK button or something. I'm just wondering if it parsed it. Where did it go? There's the ISO. Huh. All right, let me think here. What sources are used for the data? Asks Cloak. Oh, I'm sorry. Subgary Rich also said the linear correlation. He has a couple of interesting comments um, regarding the linear ish correlation between, relationship between um, GDP and uh, confirmed cases. It would make sense that more test kits would result in higher figures. I mean, in the UK, we ramped up testing recently, and then and the cases also went up, uh, which people were freaking out about. But these were always cases we just didn't know about. Yeah, that's right. And I remember one of the, um, like, on Democracy Now!, they were interviewing uh, I don't know, a health expert. I can't remember if she worked for the CDC or where, but she said, yeah, you know, when we're in this upper upward hockey stick type thing right now, it's hard to know whether it's because of the virus spreading more rapidly or because of increased testing. So I think you're seeing that in the UK as well, Rich. We also suggest more money equals the ability to do more sociable things like holidays and going places and therefore more risk. Uh, that's interesting too. So, hmm. Yeah, it's, that's quite, quite interesting. I also think about though having less money might um, force people to live in more, uh, particularly in high, high density uh, urban environments, like living in favelas and things like that would encourage the spread of the disease as well, but then there wouldn't be as much test kits and testing available. So yeah, it's just kind of a lot of uncertainty there, a lot of more questions. The more we look into it, it's a very interesting topic. 
Okay, so what am I doing wrong here? Why does it not know? I'm gonna close this tab. Close this visibility tab. I mean, it seems weird to have to resort to pandas to, to convert these date formats. What the heck? Data text to columns for one column at a time. The first column is a I guess we'll just fire up pandas then. Um, yeah, pandas. So. Also, let me know if the little video of my talking head is getting in the way of stuff because it's tried to keep that small. <clears throat> Alright, let's create a new uh, notebook.
me just double check where I stored it to. So this is a little bit different data. But it gives us a population and cases and deaths. Well, let's just take a look. I just want to get one of these tools to work. <laughs> we'll reorder, reorder the columns in a minute. So yesterday... Couldn't get the date to sort of parse on import, so let's do that now. Date time in sixty four. I hope the gap under tool is not too. <laughs> Too touchy with these. I think we'll have to format them still. Because it's, it's a CSV, so it's going to be strings in any case. Ah. So I don't know if I did that. Very cool. All right, so now what we want to do is just export the columns. We want our M. Ah, and they have to, we have to rename them. Let me just look this one up. Uh, Just need to. How the heck did I do that? Mm. Read the docs real quick. Uh, so we've got a um, columns mapper dictionary. So you just use a dictionary. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, it looks like my stream is frozen a bit. Is that the case? Let me refresh this page. Okay, good to go. I guess it just froze on my screen. All right, so now we're gonna rename these columns, then we will uh, then we'll upload it. And by the way, this code and th this notebook is already on GitHub. If you're wanting to check it out, um, this iPi notebook and the coronavirus. Hey, what's up, Rekabig? Welcome back. Yeah, long time no talk. <laughs> Sorry if there were any messages in chat uh, in the last 
couple of minutes. I might have missed them. I don't know. My my stream looked like it was frozen in my little browser over here that I'm using to monitor the chat. What have you been up to, Record Big? Any cool projects or ideas you're working on? Uh, yeah, let me look. I'll just show you the link real quick. This one, GitHub. Uh, here it is right here. If you're just wanting to check out what we've been doing in the last uh, few live stream sessions. And you can download this interactive mapping project here. It's a Django app. Um, make sure we got everything published there. And then there's a few notebooks here for Jupyter Lab where we started doing this. I ah, just one notebook, sorry. Uh, interactive data exploration. When we, we sort of pivoted the project away from um, having users add their own reports and just exploring existing uh, corona data, coronavirus data. So we, we downloaded some some data from Data Hub, which had some weird strictness around um, scraping the data using Python. So we had to like spoof the user agent. Anyway, what we're doing here is aggregating um, the data by country because uh, some of it is there's provinces as well as countries. So we just um, sliced a day of it and um, aggregated it so that we wouldn't have all the sub-provinces of China, for example, we would just have one count for China, then we created some um, summary statistics, just counting them all, uh, confirmed cases, recovered re reason, uh, deaths uh, for each country for that day, um, and then we were wanting to compare them against the max, so proportionally, I think this per capita approach that we're using today is a lot better, but in any case, this is what I was doing yesterday. Uh, mapped it out to some new columns, then just looked at the distribution of these uh, values and they're like the orders I mentioned are just huge, way apart. So countries like United States and China and Italy uh, really just overshadow Angola, for example, where they don't have a lot of testing equipment for per, perhaps uh, maybe not a lot of cases, I don't know. Yeah, you can see here China, Germany, Italy, Spain, and the United States are the only um, sort of countries that have a um, sort of a significant level of confirmed cases above like the, the 30th percentile or whatever this, no, I don't think we're working with percentiles here, but essentially it's just, yeah. Uh, everything else was just almost, there was no signal there. Uh, but I did, I was able to uh, use a geocoder here as was recommended by CyberGuy Rich. And I was thinking about mapping this data, but then just totally took it a different direction today, mothball this project, so. Uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Rekabek uh, says, just finished up my mentorship last month at the coding boot camp. Got my first job in the industry mid-March. Very cool. Where are you getting the raw data from? Okay, so uh, for this notebook, uh, it was this um, data hub. Well, for whatever reason, they, they're publishing open data, but they won't let you like use it simply from Python. There was I was getting 403 errors. I had to spoof my user agent. So now today we're just um, pivoting. We're using right now from the EU open data portal, COVID-19 cases, data here. Let's make sure you've got that. I gotta remember to post these in, in the YouTube channel. Um, and then looking at our world in data, there's some really great uh, visualizations here. So we're using these for inspiration and each of the visualizations has um, open licensing and data available. So check that out. We basically realized, you know, we don't wanna reinvent the wheel here. There's some great sources and it's just good opportunity to t try out this gap miner tools as well. All right, so now where we're at is this gap miner tool doesn't like our date strings. So I've just got to parse those date strings to something it'll recognize and then we can visualize it here. And so that's why we're over here in, uh, actually I needed to go to our Jupyter lab. Um, we're parsing the data to date time 64. So now we have and this is actually a different data set. Sorry for jumping around a little bit, but this one, uh, this is actually the exact one that, um, sorry, that Rich shared yesterday, and it's this one here. So the structure is slightly different. What we have here is the day, uh, and some other columns, uh, date components, countries, and territories, and then, Confirm cases and deaths. We just want to try one of these, get it into the 
map. Sweet, thanks for the links. Yeah, you're welcome, Rekabik. Glad to hear you got your, uh, you completed your coding boot camp. That's, that's really good news. How is uh, your company faring the weather right now, so to speak? The, um, there's a lot of layoffs, uh, for example, a massive amount of layoffs, and, uh, even in tech companies, even big uh, or huge companies like with a lot of venture capital are, are folding and laying people off. Um, I think it was Lime Scooters, uh, for example. I work in mobility, uh, the mobility industry, and um, so we're kind of keeping our fingers on the pulse of that. Uh, Lime Scooters was um, a venture capital funded startup that spun off of um, Uber. Um, so I think one of the Uber co-founders created this scooter, electric scooter company and uh, got huge amounts of funding. And just like in the last few days, they laid off like 400 employees via via like a zoom meeting they just told people you you've been your position has been i don't know somehow they just worded it like very uh mechanically or something it's strange so yeah venture capital funded silicon valley yellow brick road mentality i think we've got to evolve out of that i hope we get a, the opportunity to take this covid crisis as um a learning that it shook us up so much that we realized the foundations of our economic model are may, are not sustainable. We can't survive. We can't thrive with this this model, this economic model. Rekabik says my company is a job marketplace for manufacturing, so we're actually seeing an uptick at the moment. We're working fully remote at the minute, full speed ahead. That's yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. All right. Make sure I send this to Gapminder Tools also for you, Rickabick. Are you doing uh, JavaScript work, or what kind of um, tools and are you working with at the moment? That's right. I think so. There's two two main data sets. Who is this from? Europa. I'll just say Europa. Load that in. Just run this again. Rename the columns. Oh, that was good. I'm just going to parse the date times again. Check it. And now we'll just do this column mapping. I'll come back to this other data um, in just a moment. Let me just actually mention that, though. All right, just while it's fresh on my mind. I was hoping to import it from HT by HTTP. By data into the notebooks folder. How about that? Makes it easier to load it in. Yeah, because with the uh, coronavirus mapper project, it's I'm not going to be using so many third party data sources for the time being. So there we are. Now we can get those something. Let me just name it after it.
right, so we'll, we got the two streams we're going to be working on here. I'll try to get both these um, formatted correctly. Yeah, we've got these strange day formats, so uh, country, time, and total room cases. So we just need to parse the date times again. Let's grab this whole thing. Normally, you can just, when you do this read CSV, you can tell pandas to parse the dates, which actually I should try here just for the heck of it. But it's not picking them up. There's something going on with this parse dates thing. Really frustrating. Anyway, there we are. So now I can just write it. Uh, I suppose I can just override it, in fact. Uh, Should I treat the data as immutable? Is that a, is that a principle that anyone subscribes to? Oh shoot, my chat's paused, sorry about that. Uh, Reykjavik says, yeah, working in JavaScript, but we're transitioning to microservices, going to converting an existing monolith to TypeScript. Okay, cool. is immutable. Now yeah, the fun hopefully will begin. Gapminder tools. I should be able to add data to the JavaScript, I don't know, TypeScript, but uh, um, yeah, I was just looking at this other Our World in Data project. I think they were writing that in TypeScript. All right, choose the uh, CSV file. Coronavirus mapper, notebooks, data, parsed dates should work. Uh, That's pretty opaque. Let me just try. Um, oh man. <laughs> Why do they do that year, month, and then they take out the hyphens for that? Jeez. Is there a custom one? Oh, let's see if it works. Whatever, man. Missing column value. Okay. Angie, I need help. I don't know how to use your tool, this tool here. Well, dang. 
Yeah, and I gotta kind of cut this, keep this stream today a little bit short. Um, meeting with uh, my friend John, who has been on this stream before. We're gonna look at this mapping project and, and just uh, have some tea and chat, but probably don't want to do it on the stream. Uh, but I'll be able to stream tomorrow. Man, bummer. Hmm. Uh, well, let me Google that error, of course. Maybe if I try an Excel file, it'll have uh, better uh, metadata. I should try that from the beginning. So if I, I'll still need to rename the columns. Why is this stuff always like this? Have you noticed this? Do you have these kind of problems? Just every step of the way at your work and stuff, there's always some kind of, this is, I don't think, unique to me, I hope. <laughs> I hope I'm not jinxed, but yeah, when I do stuff, I just, you have to keep at it and keep at it and find it, excuse me, try it from different angles and maybe it'll get to some re unexpected result. It's like so much uncertainty involved. It's not always the case. Some projects I can just kind of get in a, uh, a cadence and you know, just write, make features and stuff. But yeah, this this experimental stuff just doesn't quite work that way. Uh, Jerry Life, right, Jerry Life. Regbix says, yeah, it has been my experience working with AWS this week. Oh man, <laughs> I don't even want to get started on AWS. Yeah, we're using that also, geez. <laughs> It's a, I think, I don't know, there's a lot of good stuff probably about AOS, like in terms of stability and a number of uh, components they offer, services they offer, but man, it's a whole tangled mess there. Uh, finding anything is really difficult and you, there's so many components to learn. I, I'm just pining for much simpler means of writing software. I really think that microservices uh, approach and TypeScript and all that, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. And, Man, it's, I think overall, most projects don't need it. We're using serverless and writing just everything as lambdas. It's freaking costly. And I think the emerging advice is not to use AWS Lambda for jobs that could be done with EC2 instances that could run in a container. Uh, just rely on containerized services. If you don't want to manage the infrastructure, then use a managed infra uh, container service. And just focus on your app and write it using a framework that's been around for a lot of years. It depends on what type of app you're running, but if it's got, if you're making API calls and getting data from APIs from, uh, you know, Lambda approach with the API gateway and stuff is going to be exorbitantly expensive. Um, then the software engineering is fragmented. The tooling is very immature. You, uh, the guys at work oftentimes have to do like console logs, logging to debug things. Uh, in deploying, you, it, you can't work on your code uh, with your local machine. I don't want to go keep on down this AWS uh, Lambda, but I think the, we're getting sold a bill of goods with the whole serverless movement. It's freaking expensive. It's freaking costly. It's uh, the developer experience is horrible. Yeah. So, and I do data sort of engineering stuff and. Almost every time we worked with an AWS uh, service like uh, SageMaker or something like that, or they have managed um, Spark clusters and stuff like that, we've just had weird, unforeseeable difficulties with it. Um, yeah, which is not a really great experience. And they're, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna go on one, one more level of detail here, but. Uh, the main selling point is that you don't need ops people, that you can save all this money from um, 
not having to hire staff. Uh, but that is just, I think it's just not true. We have AWS ops people now instead of DevOps people. That's the whole specialization, You're just learning how to write cloud formation templates or whatever and manage and monitor and scale AWS services that are supposed to auto scale and uh, just like, I don't think it's truthful. So then you end up paying the same salaries for ops people and you pay probably 10 times what you would pay running a containerized service. Yeah, it's craziness. Okay, cool. Right, let's get to a stopping point here today. I have to eat dinner also. Got minor tools, I'm so bummed that it didn't work. Sorry to flow around this once again. If I open up the XLS with LibreOffice. Rename the columns. It's a really big spreadsheet. Uh, all right, so, but the cool thing is the dates are parsed by not storing all your data as strings, so that's good. Delete columns. Rename column. Now these are UK, I think, timestamps. Can you just move a column or? That's another thing. Why they would rely on column order. In that um, CapMiner app when you have column names here. Probably because it's JavaScript, things are just suboptimal. Rekovic says, most of my frustration has been with RDS, the relational database service, and creating a cron job to export restore from snapshots has been a headache. Hmm, yeah, we're doing that. Also, we're uh, mirroring data um, with, you don't need a cron job for that, though. There's a RDS snapshot service. How often do you need your snapshot to run? Yeah, I think this is the doc. You probably already found this, but let me just share it anyway. Daily. Hey, what's up, Dr. Interfraid? Welcome. I think you probably don't need to use cron for that, Rekovic. I think you can just um, set it up 
have you read this page? I'm not sure exactly. I don't do a lot of AWS ops, so I'm just trying to be helpful here. Yeah, but automated backups occur daily during the preferred backup window. If the backup requires more than the time allotted in the backup window, the backup continues after the window ends. Yeah. So it sounds like a daily by default. You can say, set it to when it should do it. Cool beans. What have you been up to uh, lately, Dr. Unafraid? It's nice to have you back on the stream. Okay, our data, the date format's correct. Uh, it's an XLS format. Hopefully, Gapminder tools can work with that. Now, copyright under the Gapminder tools offline, I think, said. <laughs> buyer beware basically no warranty here so maybe if i provided this excel file with the right uh, column names uh, i was reading it it'll just work <laughs> i hope so all right time goes down and I didn't really format the time. I hope it can handle that. And that could be the underlying issue. I'm just getting some really ambiguous um, error message. But we do have time granularity to the day. Okay, something's happening. It's a big spreadsheet. It's like 18,000 rows, I think. And then we got a white screen. All right. Because other bubbles so what you, what's the configuration here okay so let's see rectifix says yeah AWS automatically makes snapshots the issue is that I need to restore a separate instance with the auto generated snapshot at a specific time of day got it Dr. Arnold says yeah 1080p is only available so too much buffers for me because speed was slow for my ISP hmm you can't uh, change the stream Quality. I could downgrade my stream quality, but I don't know if I can do that while recording. Recordings copy. Yeah, I can't do all video output is active. Sorry, Doctor, I'm afraid. All right, so basically, there's a list of countries here that we don't have with ours. But it looks like it parsed the dates at the least. So that's a good sign. Let me double check. Last. Oh, right, right. Column ordering matters. Okay, so the first column, <laughs> this is the weird thing, but. In the CSV docs, you have to put the country, then the time, then your um, metrics, essentially. Delete. So now we should be good. I'm sorry. Let's see. 
Yeah, Rick says, thought Twitch added the encoding options for all users. Weird that you don't have quality options. Thought it must have scaled it back. Yeah, uh, on the video, is there a button? On my sort of preview video, there's a little gear icon. And when I click that gear icon, I can I can go to quality. Oh, it says auto or 1080p. Are you, uh, are you on auto quality? Because that might do just auto scaling it. I have a lot to learn about how Twitch works. I, I don't really know much about it. I'd like to get the chat maybe on, on the side of the screen so that half, you know, you can see the chat and I, I would scale the window uh, somehow so that, I don't know, just more social that way and I don't have to repeat what people say. Uh, Dr. Rupert asks, how long is the stream going to be today? I'm probably going to wrap it up in around 10 minutes. I just want to have something concrete for this, but uh, I need to eat dinner and then I'm going to hang out with my friend John. And I don't know whether we'll want to hang out on stream or not, but we're going to do some similar stuff. We're going to look at some data visualization and mapping uh, stuff, but I don't know. Sometimes we just like to drink tea and chat and stuff. So I will be able to stream tomorrow, though. I've got some free time. So let's see, new chart with our data from Excel. No other options for quality. Okay, sorry about the do uh, doctor, I'm afraid. I don't know if there's some documentation I can read on uh, sending multiple. I don't think I have uh, enough CPU, so to speak, to encode multiple bit rates, but uh... hmm. yeah, if anyone knows the docs. Uh, if there's some documentation on how I could provide a stream in multiple bit rates, I would, I'll read it. Oh, okay, Dr. Rumford has some questions about freelancing. Okay, sounds good, yeah. Click see example and look at the provided table. You should adjust your data to look like the either one in the examples. No extra stuff. Country indicator. Uh, because time is in columns though. see that little preview Hmm. 
entities in the first column should match the ones already used. Uh, so the three-letter country code. Okay. We actually have those, and I can uh, make those lowercase. Now for the date format. It's pretty specific date format. All right, let's see. Okay, country. Oh, here we are. So they do have ah, come on. territory codes. So it wants us to use territory codes. And there was this data format number. Where was that? This gives me a little bit more control. <laughs> I think he likes it like that. I think the data is in good shape here. Thankfully, I was able to do that all in LibreOffice. Yeah, and I don't see this. Is, I should be able to see a preview or something about this, but I don't see it. And the year. Oh, man. Try to add it to the active chart from the Excel file with the formatted data just so it's clear. Column one is country, column two is time. Yes. Do we need column headers? Yeah, I would think you could use column headers on the Why not? Okay. And apparently it's figured it out, so well, let me select the uh, time format. Let's try it.
We got life expectancy and income. When I change it here. I could take a look at this tool and find out how they're parsing the data in because it seems to be uh, kind of brittle or something. If it's not exactly right, it just doesn't work at all. Oh, goodness. We got something. <laughs> all right, data doubts. So on the, we got cases over time. Oh man, look at that. And let's color it by a country. I don't know if that's going to be country name. I don't know if that's going to be helpful. It's pretty cool. Now let's uh, animate it. Whoa, Nelly. This is what we were trying this whole time. <laughs> Only took one and a half hours. like have the nice country name but okay China had a big spike and I'm kind of curious if uh, the reporting the quality of reporting um, and the accuracy of reporting has aside from socioeconomic reasons but if there's other political reasons why the reporting might be inaccurate Yeah, and this is also important why we want to look at it per capita cases um, or per cases per million. So that'll be the next thing. Maybe tomorrow I'll continue a little bit on this data exploration. Now that I've kind of got the basic working uh, you know, recipe to follow, let me just try a different chart type. Bubbles, lines, or rankings. Hmm. Well, we'd kind of like the... Uh, map. I was hoping to get to map. So I kind of like to clear the clear the data from this map and use my own data. Huh. Well, let's just try file, add data to the active chart from Excel. Formatted data. And it's reading the Excel sheet. Uh, another another problem here is the granularity of the data. The gap miner data is in years and ours is in year month so it's not going to load into this and I don't want to I want to actually create a map we have bubbles lines mountains and rankings I don't want any of those when I create a new chart from our data it doesn't let me create a map hmm Strange. But yeah. 
here we go, it's the same, same thing, it's just a little easier to compare. And again, this should be cases per million, um, but this is just the absolute count of cases. Britain here. Yeah, and since like basically these charts, the, the ones that are easiest to make are kind of, <laughs> you know, it's like comparing and ranking, then there would be, I think, political incentive to kind of mislead people. And definitely that's the case in the United States where they've been downplaying it and uh, just exacerbating the problem. People aren't prepared. And now it's essentially the epicenter, more or less. I don't know. Yeah, so. Okay, well, thanks. This has been a Code Buddies. Uh, not so much live coding as data exploration session and hangout. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by the Twitch chat, Twitch channel. Dr. Unafraid, it was good to see you again. Uh, look forward to seeing you shortly. We can talk more about freelancing. Reykjavik, great news about your, your job after doing the boot camp. That's always cool to hear. I hope you work through your AWS task and have some clarity on how that uh, needs to be done with the cron job. Uh, let's see. Oh, and I had to restart the um, stream, but uh, uh, Cyber Guy Rich, thanks again for your advice on the data sources and for coming along on the journey, guiding the process. Hope to see you all again. I'll try to stream uh, again uh, probably tomorrow. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, I'm going to include links to all the data sources and tools below. Uh, the video in the show notes please do feel free to leave a comment or question if you're having troubles getting any of the tools to work or if you're wanting to try out our open source tool do um, just give me a shout and i can help out in any way possible thanks again for watching this has been code buddies live code hangout have a great day and enjoy the weather and stay safe